If you want a solution to manage and automate SSL certificates in Azure Key Vault for pretty much no cost, including the SSL certificates themselves, then this is the video for you. Hi there, my name is Matt Orford, Matt Orford out on the Twitters and the socials and all that sort of thing. Great to have you here. I wanted to start just by saying that with SSL certificates in Azure, yes, there are many different options. There are a lot of services now that support managed certificates. So you can go to an Azure web app or to Azure front door. And as long as you've got your verification in place, you can go and get an SSL certificate, a managed SSL certificate issued to those services by Microsoft, and you don't have to pay for it and you don't have to worry about the renewal. And that is fantastic as well. And I see that being used a lot out in the field. Although they do have some limitations around the names that you can use on them and not all services provide them as well. Yes, there are things like Front Door and Web Apps that I just mentioned, but there are a bunch of other services, App Gateway, Virtual Machines, probably a bunch of other things as well that don't support the managed certificates. So in that case, you need to manage the certificates for those other services. And you can do that in Key Vault today. But what I wanna show you today is around having an automated service that is out there for free and that manages the SSL certificates, including the issuing and renewing as well. The other thing worth mentioning is that Key Vault can integrate with some certificate authorities as well to go and issue certificates. And I think there are two certificate providers that are supported today. And the issue that I see with that, there's twofold usually. The first one is it's relatively expensive to go and get those SSL certificates issued from those providers. And also the billing side of it can be quite clunky for some customers and some partners out there as well. You need to often put credit into the account of the provider first before you can get the certificate issued. And that can cause some awkward issues at renewal time if you don't have your credit there ready as well. So like I say, the solution that I want to show you today is free, it's open source, it integrates with uh, Let's Encrypt and some other providers for those SSL certificates. So let's jump to a whiteboard, we'll talk about the Acme protocol, and then a bit more specifically about this solution that I want to show you today, and then we'll jump into the demos. What I want to start with here on the whiteboard is something known as Acme, A-C-M-E. And like all good things in IT, this actually stands for something, and it's automatic, Certificate Management Environment. And what this actually is, is a protocol. So Acme itself is a protocol. And you'll see this reference a fair bit when you're going and looking at SSL certificates out there in the field and doing things like what we're going to be doing today. You'll see Acme referenced all the time. And the way this works is on one side, over here on the right hand side, we need some Acme providers. So these are the certificate authorities that can issue SSL certificates using the Acme protocol. So the popular one and the one that we're going to be using today is Let's Encrypt. There are also other ones we've got Bypass. And then there's uh, some other ones that you can purchase from as well. So we've got providers like GoDaddy and they support the Acme protocol. And we've got other ones like Entrust as well. The list goes on and on, to be honest. These are just a couple of the popular ones, both for free, those top ones there, and the other ones are sometimes where you'd pay for the certificates. But regardless, all of them support the Acme protocol. And then over here on the left-hand side, we need an Acme client. So this is on your side, you know, what are you going to use that is going to manage the issuing of the certificate when you want to generate a certificate and when it's up for renewal, how's that going to be managed by something on the client side, on your side of things that might be on a server. In our case, that's going to be hosted in Azure and integrated with Key Vault. So one of the most popular ones over here is something called CertBot. And make sure to check that out. It's got a range of supported options. It's very, very popular for the Acme protocol. But the one that we're going to be having a look at today specifically is something called Key Vault, Acme Bot. And it's this thing here that we're going to be looking a bit more closely at today in this demo. 
and at a super high level, and we'll dive more into this in just a moment, but the way this works at a higher level is from the client side of things, so from the Acme bot over here, this is going to reach out to an Acme provider. So in our case, that's gonna be Let's Encrypt over here, and it's going to do that using the Acme protocol. And it's going to say, hey, I'd like an SSL certificate for you know, test.matalpha.com or whatever your domain is. And the Acme provider goes, okay, no worries. You need to prove to me that you now own that domain and that I can issue you a certificate that covers that name. So there's some validation that goes on in the back end, which we'll speak about in a minute. And then what happens is that provider comes back to the Acme client and says, hey, no worries, here's your SSL certificate. You can now go and do whatever you want with it. So at a super high level, that is how the protocol itself works. But if I just move this whiteboard down a little bit, let's actually dive into the Key Vault Acme bot itself and take a closer look at how this is going to work. So this solution itself is all centered around an Azure function. So we've got the little function logo there. There we go, Azure function. And so this guy here, this is the Key Vault Acme bot. And that's what we're going to deploy into our Azure environment in just a few minutes when I get to the demo. Now, what happens from there is that we have also got a key vault. Now, this can be an existing Azure key vault. You can hook the Acme bot into an existing one, or you can go and deploy a new one when you deploy the solution. And that's what I'll be doing here today because I don't have an existing one on me. But like I say, you can hook that in if you want to. And let's say we've got the little logo here for Key Vault, something like that. There we go. And then over here on the right hand side, let's go and grab purple for this one. We have got the Acme provider that we're going to be using. And so for us, that's going to be Let's Encrypt. And to be honest, these are really the only pieces of the puzzle that we need to manage this whole thing. It's quite cool, actually. Now, what happens here, let me go ahead and just pick a different color here. We'll go back to blue. What happens is in the Azure function, as you'll see, there's a nice dashboard that we can use to go and issue and manage certificates. And what will happen is that in the function, when we say, hey, I want a new certificate for this domain name, then that will go and reach out to Let's Encrypt. And it will use the Acme protocol that we spoke about to reach out to Let's Encrypt and say, hey, I'd like an SSL certificate to cover such and such domain name. What Let's Encrypt will do, we'll go, okay, but I need to verify that you own that domain name that you're trying to get that SSL certificate for. So the other thing that we need for all of this to work is a DNS zone. And my DNS zone that we'll be using in the demo today is just mattalford.com. But of course, you will have your own DNS zone name. It does need to be in a DNS provider that the Key Vault Acme bot supports. And there's a bunch of them that you'll see on the GitHub page when we take a look at that. Mine's out in Cloudflare. I think there's probably eight or nine that are supported in total. So we've got this DNS zone up here. So the functions reached out to Let's Encrypt and said, hey, I'd like this SSL certificate. Let's Encrypt goes and checks and says, hey, is that validation record in place in the, in the domain name? Or sorry, in the DNS zone for that DNS zone so I can issue that certificate. And what will happen is the Key Vault Acme bot actually automatically takes care of that as well. So when it goes and issues that uh, request from Let's Encrypt, Let's Encrypt will come back with a challenge and say, hey, you have to go and verify using this string or this ID. So the Acme bot will then reach out to the DNS zone and we need some authorization here. So this will be using an API key and it will then go and inject a DNS record into that DNS zone. So all the while behind the scenes, Let's Encrypt is checking for that validation. And at this point in time, we've now validated that we own the domain. So what will happen is Let's Encrypt will come back to our function here, the Acme bot, and it will say, no worries. Here is your fancy new SSL certificate for whatever domain name that you've gone and issued that for. And over here on the left-hand side, the Key Vault Acme Bot function will then go ahead and store that in Azure Key Vault. And then of course, from there, you can do whatever you want with it. You can hook in other services to Key Vault to pull that certificate out of there. You can go and use it in external services from Key Vault, so on and so forth. So at a really high level, 
That's how all of this works. I think it will make a lot more sense though as we jump into the demo. So let's go, I'll go and show you the GitHub page and then we'll deploy it and take a look. This here is the GitHub page for the Key Vault Acme bot. As you can see up the top here, I'm at the repository for the Key Vault Acme bot. There'll be links in the description down below as well. Of course, if you wanna follow along, there'll be a few links down there for you for the things that we're looking at today. But if I scroll down here, we'll just go past the code for now. There's an excellent readme in here that tells you all about what this does. There's some links here off to the documentation. So I'll go ahead and open that up. There's some great GitHub uh, community discussions that go on in here in this GitHub repository. And it tells you down here what the motivation behind this, what the feature support is, so on and so forth. So we can see here that this can issue certificates for Zone Apex, Wildcard and SANS. We've got a dashboard there for easy management. It takes care of the certificate renewal as well, which is obviously huge because that is not something that you want to be worrying about. And here we go here. These are the Acme V2 compliant certification authorities that you can hook the Key Vault Acme bot into. So like I said, today we'll be using Let's Encrypt, but there are two other ones there that you can use as well. So if I jump over here to the, uh, to the wiki page, on the right hand side here, I did mention there is the DNS provider configuration as well. And there's a bunch of supported DNS providers. And you can see here the list, there's about, what's that, eight or nine in there in that list. So like I said, I'll be using Cloudflare here today, but as long as your DNS for your domain is hosted in any of those domains, then you're pretty much good to go. Now, if it's not, and you do have some experience, you can, as it says here, go ahead and use custom DNS, but you'd need to implement your own API for that. So you'd need to know the API and how to register DNS for the service that you're using. But I dare say that a lot of the common ones are supported there by default out of the box. So the deployment is pretty straightforward. They've actually got this nice button here. If you haven't seen this before, this deployment section here is actually just deploying an ARM template behind the scenes to the Azure portal. And that's how I'll go ahead and do it. But in this repository, they do have Azure Bicep for the deployment as well. And they've got some Terraform um, modules in there too, if that's your flavor of infrastructure as code. So I am in the Azure public cloud. If I right click on deploy to Azure, I'm just gonna open that in a new tab. And that is gonna go ahead and launch that ARM template from that GitHub repository and allow me to go ahead and deploy this solution. So I'm gonna put this in a new resource group. I'll just call it RG KV Certbot. We'll drop all of my stuff in Australia East. And for the app prefix name, I'll just make that key KV Certbot. So that is gonna be what uh, prefix gets put on the names of the resources that get deployed. And we need a mail address here. That is a requirement for the Acme protocol. So I'll have that as certificates at madorphan.com. You can see I've gone this, through this before. And then we've got the Acme endpoint here. So like I said, I'll be using Let's Encrypt, but you can just select one of the other ones there if you wanted to use a different Acme endpoint or that Acme provider, the, the place that's actually going to be issuing the SSL certificates. And then these last few options here down the bottom are around the key vault. So do we wanna create with Key Vault? So do we want a Key Vault to be deployed with this deployment? In my case, that's true. If you had one already though, you could set this to false. And then down the bottom here, you'd need to provide the Key Vault base URL of your existing Key Vault so that the function app that this is going to deploy knows where to access the Key Vault to store and manage those certificates. But like I say, for my case, that'll be true. And therefore we don't need that URL at the bottom. And that is pretty much it. So we'll go to review and create there. And if that validates okay, there we go, validation has passed. I'll go ahead and create that. And when that's spun up, we'll go and take a look at the resources. And that went ahead and deployed okay, that looks good. So let's jump into the resource group and we'll take a look at the resources that we've got here. So as I scroll down, the main thing to be aware of with this whole solution is that everything here is driven by this function app. And you can see that in the naming there, it's got that prefix that I entered when we deployed the ARM template, but the function app is the center here of what's going on. Now we've also got application insights and a log analytics workspace that the function app is integrated with. So if there's any issues or any debugging that you need to do, that's all on by default. Of course, the function app needs somewhere to run. So it's running on an app service plan. Now this is running on the consumption plan as well. So that is why this thing costs pretty much no money because the function app and these resources here are all built based on consumption. And to be honest, it's gonna cost maybe a couple of cents a month, I suspect. 
unless you're doing a heap of calls into this function and generating a lot of certificates, I can't see it costing more than a few cents a month. And the SSL certificates themselves are actually free as well. So a very, very low cost solution. The other thing that we've got here as well is the key vault itself. So I deployed that with this deployment. If you had an existing one, that obviously wouldn't be here in the deployment. And then we've got a storage account down the bottom there, and that is used for the function app itself. That's not anything to do with the, the solution side of things that we'll be looking at here. So let's go ahead and look at the function app here. There's just a few things that I wanna show you as we go into here. And there's a few things with the key vault that we need to prep in a moment as well. So if I go into the functions, I'm not gonna go through these individually with you, but you'll see in here, there are a bunch of functions that are taking care of this thing. You can see it's doing, uh, you know, it's checking for the DNS challenge. So when, when the provider has gone and made that DNS challenge, there's some uh, functions in here to deal with that checking the validation, getting certificates, getting expired certificates, so on and so forth. You can see there's a bunch of stuff in here. Some of these are HTTP triggered, some of them are timer triggered. So the ones that are checking for renewal and automatically renewing, they're uh, based on timers here that are checking those certificates in the key vault. So yeah, a bunch of functions in there that you can go and have a look at. And obviously the code is up there in GitHub as well, if that is your thing. But the other thing that I wanted to show here is that this has been enabled with a system assigned managed identity because we need to provide this function app with access to the key vault. Otherwise it won't be able to uh, manage the certificates that are in there. Now by default, this deployment that I just did uses the role-based access control method on the key vault, which is pretty fine and, and I'm happy with that, but I'm just not sure today if, the, um, if Azure Web Apps support retrieving a certificate from a key vault with the role-based authentication method as opposed to the older access policies. So I'm gonna switch the key vault across to using access policies. So I am just gonna copy that principal ID there. And then if we go back to the resource group and into our new key vault, what I wanna do is come into access policies, no, down to access configuration. And I wanna switch this from role-based access control across to the vault access policy. Uh, so that all looks good. So I'll apply that change. And there we go. So we are now using the vault access policy. So if I go into access policies, I might just need to give that a quick refresh there. There we go. I can now create some access policies. So the first one that I want to do is I'm just going to give this full access to the key vault for now. And I'll click on next and I'll paste in that ID of the function app. And we can see there that we've got that system assigned managed identity. So I'll go next and I will create that. So that is giving the function app access into this key vault. The other thing that I need to do is I'm gonna create one for myself as well, just so I can see the certificates in there. So I'll give myself full access there and find my user account. There I am there. And lastly, because I'm gonna show you at the end, you know, an Azure Web App actually pulling the SSL certificate from the key vault, I need to provide the Azure Web App service with access into here as well. And for that one, I think we can just do a get and list, not on keys, sorry, but over here on secrets and on certificates. And for the principle in this one, does Web App bring up my search? It might be Azure Web. No, I'm going to go need and search for this. I should have had this written down, shouldn't I? Uh, let's have a look. Azure Web App Key Vault Access. Troubleshooting on the fly, right? And there we go with a bit of searching around. I just went and paused the video. I did actually find that it is called Microsoft Azure App Service. Uh, there we go. So we'll go next to that. So this allows the, the Azure app service itself that's running inside of Azure, not specifically any instance of app service, but any app service that you've got inside of your subscription to access the key vault. So there, we'll go ahead and apply that one and create that. So now just to recap there, we're allowing our function app access to this key vault and that can go ahead and do pretty much everything at the moment. If you're deploying this in production, you can obviously limit this down for the secret and certificate just to doing things like create, delete, get, list, you know, that sort of thing. And then we've got the Azure app service there that we just added, and that has got get and list on the secret and certificate. And then myself, just so we can go in and see the SSL certificates as well. So with that said, if we go ahead back to our resource group and have a look at our function here, what we can actually do is browse to this URL. I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard and we'll go to a new tab here. And if I put a slash dashboard on the end, 
this is going to load the dashboard for the Acme cert bot itself. Now this is going to fail when I hit enter and it says the access to that was denied. I don't have authorization to view the page. And this is because by default, when you deploy this from the GitHub repo, it is expecting some authentication to be on this application here because we don't want just anyone being able to browse to the dashboard and be able to manage all of your SSL certificates. So there's a few ways you can handle this, but the easiest way if you just want to have a play around is to come in here to authentication and we need to add an identity provider. And the easiest one for me because it's already set up is by using Microsoft. And we can pretty much use just the default uh, settings here. So this will go ahead and create an app registration in my Azure AD. And then that will allow me to log into this, uh, this dashboard using my own Azure AD account from inside the tenant that I'm currently logged in with. So we'll go to permissions there. That's all fine. So I'll add that authorization. And then when I refresh the page in the browser there, I'll be able to log in using my Azure AD credentials. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and we'll do a refresh over here. There we go. So it now says permissions required to be able to access that, um, that application. So I'll accept that. And because I'm logged in here already, that will go ahead and authenticate me and allow me to log in to the dashboard that's being hosted inside of that function app. And it's pretty basic, but that's all we need, right? I think this is actually still maybe a work in progress on the project as well. Uh, oh, there we go. That's interesting. So it's actually come up with an error there to say that it can't get certificates because the DNS provider is not configured. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to configure that in just a moment. That's saying that it can't go and check uh, and reach out to our DNS provider. In my case, that's Cloudflare. That's okay for now. And we've got no SSL certificates here yet, right? Because we've uh, deployed a new key vault with nothing in it. But if we wanted to over there on the right hand side, we can go ahead and add a new certificate. But that's not going to work at the moment because I haven't configured it uh, with Cloudflare to go ahead and do that DNS verification. So let's jump across back into the function app and we'll do that now. So this is all done in the configuration of the function app. So these are app settings here. And there is some documentation on the GitHub page about these. If I show some of these values here, you'll see some things that we injected when we deployed this. So we've got some things like the, the contact, so my email address, which endpoint we're using, uh, what the key vault base URL is, so on and so forth. But there are a few other ones that we can put in here. But the first thing that we need to do is actually jump over to Cloudflare and create an API key so that this function app is able to go and create DNS records in my DNS zone over at Cloudflare. So over here in Cloudflare, if I just go into my profile and then on the left hand side here, I can go to API tokens and I'm going to create a new token here and use this template for editing a DNS zone. If I scroll down a little bit, what permissions do we want to give it? So DNS zone edit, that's fine for now. And for the resources here, I'll just give it the specific zone of mattorford.com. I won't do any client IP address filtering and the TTL, let's just give that uh, what is today? 1st of October. Let's just give it a few days from now. And does it need the start date? There we go. Continue to summary. Uh, that all looks pretty good. So I'll create that token. If you're doing this, make sure to copy this out now because you will lose this as you navigate away from here. So if we go back over into the function here, what we can do is add a new application setting. And this one specifically is called AcmeBot. Cloudflare API token. So if you were using another service, it's probably just going to replace the name Cloudflare there with the other service, but that is the one for Cloudflare. And I'm going to do a naughty here and I'm going to paste the API key directly in the application setting here. Ideally in a perfect world, you would probably put the API key inside of a key vault as a key vault secret and then put a reference here from this function app to the key vault secret. I'm just doing a bit of a shortcut here, being a bit lazy. So don't do this, uh, definitely not in production because you can now see your API token here in, uh, in plain text in the portal. So that's the API token, so that's all well and good. And the other thing that I'm gonna put on here for now because we're here, is this function does actually support sending a webhook when it does some sort of activity. So if it goes and creates a new certificate, it can send a webhook somewhere. And I've actually set up a Slack channel just with a basic incoming webhook, nothing fancy at all. And I'll show that to you towards the end. So I'll put that in here now while we're in the app configuration. And for that, I'll click on save, which will go ahead and restart the function there, which is all good. So when that restarts, we'll go back into the dashboard and we'll have a look at creating a few certificates. 
and that function app has restarted. So now let's go and add a certificate. So we'll click on the add button over here. And now we're from here, we can choose which DNS zone that we want to add the certificate for. And you could have more than one DNS zone being managed uh, by the Key Vault Acme bot. That's absolutely fine. And that is taking a while there. What have I done wrong? That should have happened pretty quickly. I did wonder when I created that API token, I did create it for today's date in Australia, but I've probably set the start date on that a bit too soon. So let me have a look at the uh, API key over in Cloudflare. Uh, let me actually go back here to September. That's probably what it was, September 30th. Let's go ahead and update the token there. And I might just need to restart the web app again there, so, or the function app rather. So I'll give that another restart and let's take another look in a moment. Okay, so we'll click on add again and DNS zone. And there we go, we've got madauthor.com. So it was just that API key. So there you go, if you're having any problems with it, check out your API key and those expiry dates if you happen to set them. So I can choose madauthor.com here. And then I just need to add the DNS names that I want to appear on the certificate. So let's just go ahead and we'll do test.madauthor.com and then add that on. You could add multiple DNS names onto the certificate here if you wanted to. I'll just do the one for now, that's fine. Down here, we have the option for advanced options as well. So by default, the certificate name inside of Key Vault will be the, the name of the DNS name or the main name that you've put on the certificate, uh, just with dashes instead of uh, periods. So this one, for example, will be called test dash Matt Orford dash dot <laughs> test dash Matt Orford dash com in the name of the SSL certificate inside of Key Vault. But you can go ahead and create a custom name there if you wanted to as well. And then we've got some information there down the bottom about the private key and the, the key size. So you can modify those if you wanted to, and we can tell it whether to reuse that key for renewal or not. But those are fine for me. I won't use any advanced options and I'll just click on add. And so what this is doing in the background now is that function app is reaching out to Let's Encrypt and saying, hey, I want an SSL certificate for test.mattalford.com, please. Let's Encrypt says, yep, no worries. Here's what you need to do in DNS to verify that you own that. And then the function app is reaching out to Cloudflare using that API and injecting a DNS record into Cloudflare, going back and telling Let's Encrypt that's there now, go ahead and verify it. Let's Encrypt will check that DNS record verify that we do own the domain madauthor.com and then it will issue the SSL certificate back to the Acme bot and the Acme bot here will go ahead and actually clean up that DNS record in Cloudflare as well. So there's nothing you need to go and do in regards to the DNS records for, for cleaning up. It's all managed automatically for you. And we can see there that did take a little while, a bit longer than I expected, but the certificate was successfully issued. So that is looking good. That should do a little refresh there now. Let me just give it a hard refresh there. There we go. So in our dashboard, we can see that we've now got a managed certificate for test.mattalford.com. We can see when it was created, when it is expired, or when it will expire rather, and we can get the details here as well. And we've got some options down the bottom there. If we wanted to go in and manually renew this, we could do that. If we wanted to revoke it, we can do it from this dashboard as well. And it is worth mentioning that the, the um, Key Vault Acme bot or the cert bot, it does actually have an API as well. So you don't need to drive it with this dashboard. If you had other automations or some CICD going on where you needed certificates, you can actually use the API on this function app to go ahead and do all of these activities. It doesn't need to be driven with the dashboard, but of course the dashboard is nice when you're just playing around and getting used to it. So we've now got an SSL certificate. Let's jump back over into our key vault. So I'll go to the resource group into the key vault, let's have a look at certificates. And there we go, we have now got a certificate in there for test madauthorcom com. And there's one version of that. So I'll go into the current version and we can see here that this has been issued for test.madalford.com. The issuer here is Let's Encrypt. It is a real SSL certificate that we could now go and apply on a service. But before we do, there's a couple of other things that I wanted to show you. If we go back to the dashboard here, let's go into details and we'll actually do a renew. So again, behind the scenes that is gonna go and automatically reach out to Let's Encrypt and do the renewal of this certificate. And what I wanted to show you, if I just jump back to the key vault here, let me go back to certificates and we'll go into that certificate. And if I do a refresh there, it's probably just still going in the background. Yes, it is. We'll just give that a moment. Okay, so that was successfully renewed. 
If I go into the key vault here and do a refresh, we'll now see there are multiple versions of this certificate. So we've got the older one, which was our initial one. And now we've got the current version, which is the renewal that we just went and did. So behind the scenes, while this uh, function app is going and managing the renewal for you automatically, because the Let's Encrypt certs only have a lifetime of 90 days. So it will manage that after 60 days, I believe. It will go ahead and renew it. Key Vault will just have a new version of the certificate in there. And if your service that's hooked into Key Vault is using the latest version, it will just go and automatically update to be using the latest version. So this is really nice. It's really slick and fully automated for you as well. So with that said, let's go back into the dashboard here and I wanna add a new certificate. This time I'm just gonna create a wildcard. So I'm gonna go star.mattorford.com and I'm gonna add that one in. So that is gonna be a wildcard certificate for my mattorford.com domain. Now, by the way, while it's just going and doing that, there's no option in the dashboard here to go and delete a certificate. If you wanted to delete a certificate, what you'd need to do is come to the underlying key vault here in certificates and delete it from here. And then the function app uh, that is managing this will automatically pick that up as well. And you might've noticed back here in the dashboard as well, behind the scenes there, there's a managed certificate section and an unmanaged certificate section. And the unmanaged certificate section is if you hooked this into an existing key vault that has been successfully issued there, I'll just say, okay. So this is the section I'm talking about down here, unmanaged certificates. So if you had hooked this into an existing key vault, or if you've got certificates in your key vault that haven't been generated using this, um, the key vault Acme bot, then it's going to be an unmanaged certificate. Now, if you do have unmanaged certificates, you can go ahead and use this dashboard to do a renewal, which will go and renew it against uh, Let's Encrypt or whatever provider that you've configured, and then it becomes a managed certificate inside of your key vault as well. So there we go, we've now got two SSL certificates. If I go back into here and do a refresh, we'll see that the wildcard is in there now as well. So that is all looking pretty good. The last thing that I really wanna show you because we've pretty much covered it all is to prove to you that this thing actually works. So what I've got over here in another tab, let's go into this resource group here for RG CertBot web app. And what I've got here is just a super basic uh, app service running a Docker container, Nginx, nothing fancy at all. And if we go to this URL for the azurewebsites.net URL here, let me open that in a new browser tab, we can see the site loads and that is all looking pretty good. But if I go back to that, func uh, sorry, if I go back to this app service, what I've done here behind the scenes down in custom domains is I've added a custom domain called certbotapp.madalford.com because that is the domain that I wanna use to access this new app service. But if I try browsing to that, I've got a DNS record in place already in Cloudflare uh, that is a C name, but we get the not secure up the top there. And if we go ahead and have a look at the certificate, it's not valid because it's still using the default certificate on the app service, which only covers that azurewebsites.net domain. I don't have an SSL certificate there covering the certbot app.madalford.com. So with that said, let's go back to our app service here and we need to add an SSL certificate in. So I can come down here to TLS SSL settings and over here under the, uh, under the private key certificates, there's an option down here to import a key vault certificate. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. And this is why I put that uh, access policy way back in uh, for Azure Web App in place. It's so that this can now go and reach out to those certificates that we've got inside of the key vault. So the key vault here is the CertBot one and the certificate that I wanna use here is the wildcard. So I'll select that. That is gonna go and import that certificate from Azure Key Vault into this web app. And when that's done, there is one more step that we need to do here uh, for the app service. So back under the custom domains, I need to go and tell it for this do uh, domain name to bind that to my new SSL certificate. So I wanna use certbotapp.com and the SSL certificate is the wildcard there and that is the SS, SNI SSL. So we'll add the binding for that onto the app service. So again, behind the scenes, this is just using that wildcard that we issued automatically and it will be managed automatically with the renewal. If I go ahead back over to here and let's do a hard refresh in the browser. No, it might need me to open a new tab. Let's try incognito mode. 
there we go. So it was just caching there in my other browser tab. So I can now browse to certbotapp.madalford.com. We can see the connection is secure. And let's have a look at the certificate here. There it is. It is now showing us the common name is star.madalford.com. And down here, the issuer is Let's Encrypt. So that is using that wildcard certificate stored in the Key Vault, issued and managed by the Key Vault Acme bot that we've just gone and had a look at. And with that said, that is pretty much it. Sorry, there was one other thing that I've forgotten about. With all of that activity that we've done, hopefully my Slack webhooks have worked. And there we go. So I've just created a, a dummy channel over here in, in my own Slack channel called uh, Certbot App. And we can see here as we were going through and doing those things, it's gone and created some notifications here using that webhook. So we can see a new certificate has been issued. It tells us the name, the DNS names. So if you wanted to send this off to any service really at all, as long as it can accept an incoming webhook, you can take the data that about the, uh, the actions that are being done and you can put that into a help desk system, off to a logging system, somewhere here into Slack or Teams for notifications for the team so that they know that some uh, actions on some certificates have taken place. With that said, I'll just jump back over to the browser here. Make sure to come and check out the GitHub repository here. Like I said, there's a wiki, there's lots of great information. Have a read through the different configurations you can do. Go ahead and deploy it yourself. Like I said, it's cheap, basically free to run. It would cost you maybe a few cents a month if you go and perform a few actions against it. Everything's consumption based. So yeah, go ahead, check it out. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.